Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and in this video, I'm going to talk about my favorite things in the new Empath Path Tracer in Moto 14.1. So if you haven't used Empath yet, and you've been using the old renderer or the standard renderer in Moto, the default renderer, as it's called in the dropdown, you are used to dealing with a lot of different settings. So here we have all these settings uh, conveniently located in the settings tab uh, for things like ray tracing depth and uh, samples and things like that. You also have a whole nother tab for global illumination settings. So things like bounces and samples and all the settings for radiance caching, caustics, things like that, environment sampling. There's just a lot of different settings and it gets confusing, not just for professionals, but it's extremely daunting for people first getting into 3D. The difference between this and Empath is profound. So if I go over to settings and change my renderer from default to Empath, we go from two tabs full of settings to just a small handful of settings. There are settings for noise threshold and depth or number of bounces of the rays, but honestly, you're probably not gonna touch those. The workflow really boils down to picking the lowest number of samples you can get away with when you combine it with image denoising, which we'll get to in a moment. It's a completely different world in terms of the number of settings you have to deal with. It is vastly simplified. But the thing I like most about Empath is the modularity. You'll see a drop down here, Ray Tracing Engine. We have three different options. Foundry SSE, which is really the legacy engine that the old renderer is based on. Intel Embry, which is a modern ray tracing engine for CPUs built by Intel. And NVIDIA Optics, and I believe this is Optics 7.1 in Moto 14.1, which is a GPU-based ray tracing engine for NVIDIA cards. So what does the ray tracing engine do? Well, you can divide ray tracing into two sort of basic steps. The first step being ray casting, which is blasting rays throughout the scene to find intersections between the geometry. And that's what the ray tracing engine is speeding up. The second step is shading. So you're taking all your textures and procedurals, materials and lighting in the scene to shade the polygons in the scene and give them their final color values. What's nice about this modularity is that any updates to Intel Embry or Nvidia's optics will automatically flow into Moto's path tracer. And of course you can add new engines to take advantage of a new or existing hardware. There's also no reason why this modularity couldn't also be applied to the shading step. So I suspect future versions will include different engines for shading as well. The more geometry you have in your scene, the more dramatic the speed up will be between these different ray tracing engines. In this scene, we have a number of different assets from Kixel Megascans, totaling between 50 and 70 million polygons, depending on the shot being rendered. In the render window, you can track the calculations in the statistic pane to the right. The difference between the ray tracing engines will be expressed in these two data points, extension ray tracing and shadow ray tracing. You can see the ray tracing engine being used in this panel as well, in this case, NVIDIA Optics. If I turn off most of the shading and just go with a bare scene, we can get a better idea of the difference between the different ray casting engines. So here we're using the legacy Foundry SSC CPU engine. Extension ray tracing in this scene took five minutes and 14 seconds, shadow tracing six minutes and 23 seconds. There's just about 60 million polygons in this scene. If I take a look at Intel Embry, we're going from five minutes and 14 seconds all the way down to one minute and 51 seconds. So over twice as fast, same CPU, same everything, just a more modern ray tracing engine. If we take a look at the GPU engine, NVIDIA Optic 7, ray tracing is down all the way to 53 seconds. This is running on an NVIDIA 2080 Ti, and it's five, nearly six times as fast as the Foundry SSC CPU engine. If you look at this data in chart form, it's really pretty dramatic. The tallest bar there being the Foundry SSC legacy engine. Not only is the ray casting for optics and Embry way faster, Embry does an extremely good job keeping pace with NVIDIA Optics, considering Optics is running on a $1,200 NVIDIA 2080 Ti versus a $500 Core i9-9900K on the Embry side. Empath in Moto 14.1 also has modular denoising, meaning if I select my final color output here, I can choose from a variety of options, from Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD. Some of these like AMD AI and NVIDIA Optics require a graphics card from that manufacturer, but others like Intel will work with any CPU. I can also add multiple final color outputs, each with a different denoise option. So here I have Intel, here I have NVIDIA Optics. When the scene is rendered, images with both denoising options will be saved, and I can just pick the one I like after they're done rendering. The calculations for denoising are so fast, there's really no render penalty for having multiple denoising options in one scene. The differences in the denoising algorithms can be pretty dramatic though. So let's zoom in here and take a look at this scene without any shading. You can see this is with no denoising, quite a bit of noise here, this sort of speckly granny look. If I turn on optics denoising, all of that goes away. You can see a fair amount of detail here in the normal map. If I turn on Intel denoising, we lose quite a bit of that detail. 
it seems as though optics may be doing some sort of sharpening or the algorithm does a better job with that sort of detail. It's a little bit different here. If we look at this section of a fern, we just turn on the color version. Here's a fern in the foreground. There's a lot of depth of field going on here. If I look at no denoising, it's a big mess. If I turn on optics, looks pretty good, but if I go in close, it almost seems like this sharpening effect gives us these jpeg -y, blocky artifacts. Whereas when I look at Intel, it's very smooth. So like I said, you pick the denoising that works best with your scene. Neither of these artifacts are very noticeable when you go back to the full color version. And honestly, I think you could use either one in a scene like this. Of course, you could always blend these back in with a non-denoised version in post as well. What's great about this modularity and denoising, similar to the Raycasting engine, Intel and NVIDIA and AMD continuously update their denoising algorithms and they'll only get better. Those updates will flow right into Moto and you will be able to take advantage of them immediately. Yum, yum!